project, we chose food security and we decided to focus on just a few aspects that could either help food security in the future or uh, be detrimental. And so I focused on the consumption of meat products and how that affects future food security. Kat did uh, genetically mod modified organisms and how that will affect food security. Uh, Abdi just kind of did the general, this is food security. and. Uh, <laughs> And you focused on, Jatasia focused on uh, distribution of food and whether or not that is the real issue. Does anyone have any questions? No one? Uh, let's take a while. Here we go. A question on that. What were those three challenges that you said we're going to face? One of them was global warming. I think what was the other two? Just on the last little bit. I think quite uh, Overconsumption of water and then uh, soil erosion. I am valid on the right hand side. I saw that your the your YouTube video was mainly focused on like the state of food security today, but say in like fifty years or so, do you think we will have food to or do you think it's gonna get worse? No. I think pretty much the whole gist of the project is that it's we're kind of on a downhill trend unless we either you know resort to more genetically modified foods and I can't be saying that that yeah. will help, you know. Yeah, especially because I've done some research and I found out that genetically modified food is actually being put more into our normal everyday food so we can produce like a better quality food. So in the future, I think we will resort to more genetically modified food because it's going to be our only option because urbanization and loss of like agricultural land is actually decreasing how much we can grow. So we're going to have to like resort to maybe genetically modified food so we can grow them quicker with the limited amount of crops we have. Uh, it just depends if culture's kind of accepted. Because some people don't accept it, so they don't really grow it in their areas. And I have a far, far left here. Um, you guys talked a lot about how food distribution was a great uh, or a major problem as such. Did you have any suggestions as to how we could improve the way it was distributed? Um, well, what I was looking at when I was researching that is that it's been such an issue for so long that trying to fix the issue of food distribution is almost not impossible, but it's extremely hard because big nations such as Australia and even North America consume so much more and have such a great power in terms of cons consumption compared to smaller nations in like African and even Asian countries that... The, the idea of trying to fix food distribution probably won't help food security so much as providing using other alternatives such as genetically modified food for nations that need more food. Food is also use more aid, foreign aid with that, for yeah. food distribution. I think as far as food distribution goes, it's, it, it's pretty much directly linked to uh, the distribution of wealth. Yeah. And so we're, we have some countries that are rather wealthy and everyone can afford to eat well. Uh, you're not going to get that in that are still developing. And so I think that once those economies develop, you'll see an improvement, but until then, it's kind of bad. Uh, All right, we've got another bit of discussion to go. I know there's a couple of questions up there around too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you talked about GMOs as a possible solution to help food distribution and amount of food that we have available. But um, what are some of the obstacles that we face today that will stop GMOs from occurring? Uh, there's Why are we doing it now? There's a lot of regulations that the people have to go through to actually get these GMOs passed, such as golden rice. It was created like 20 years ago, but it has to go through 15 years of regulations to make sure that this newly spliced rice, which has like beta carotene in it, which, is, which allows people to have more um, vitamin A in their bodies. So it has to go through so many years of regulations, like testing to make sure people, that people won't have reactions to it, to make sure that it's stable, to make sure that it won't actually affect other surrounding crops. So there can still be like a genetic variation of crops, but there's just a lot of processes that we have to go through and other cultures aren't really accepting of it, such as in India, the farmers don't really want the genetically modified food in their crops because they want it to be more natural and they don't believe that we should be uh, kind of messing with the genes of the crops, but it's actually shown that genetically modified foods like actually cost less than giving these people like pro-vitamin A tablets. And so even though the farmers that live in poverty-stricken areas could have access to these GMOs, they won't take it, even though yeah. uh, they could because of the idea that they're genetically modified and could be harmful and don't have enough information. 
Yeah, it's basically a cultural <coughs> thing more than anything else I, I see. Actually, yeah, with the information thing, do you think the problem is that they don't have enough information on it? They don't know exactly what's happening? I think so, but I also think they're more scared. Like, we don't actually have a lot of information on We just know that it can cause A, B, and C, but I think it's more the fear of not knowing what it could do, what it could lead to, and all that, everything else, yeah. Okay, I think we're at, yeah. Sorry, we're actually seeing the most resistant in developing, or developed countries. Yeah. That, you know, are like, we don't know what's going to happen, and so you see lots of, like, I know back home in California, everyone's like, no GMOs, and no one buys foods that um, are genetically modified, even though in the future it kind of may be our only option. We're going to have a chance to follow this discussion a bit further, because your website is coming together at the moment. Yes. Um, I want to make sure, of course, that all these websites and projects um, do make available for everybody else to follow up on, so you may have some questions that are still going to be answered because you don't need some more research and put that information on your, on your project website. So we don't have to end the conversation there. So thanks very much to uh, Red Group. Well, uh, <laughs>